Okay, so as I'm figuring where to put my creature in my setting, I have a few of these different options. I have auto select turned off for my move tool. So I can just move my layer no matter how deep they are in the setting. Right? And I'm pretty lucky because my creature already kind of matches the textures and the colors of the setting, but I'll still optimize those. But before I do that, I need to pick the placement. So my story that I, I think makes sense is that my creature um, missing any kind of aggressive features to protect itself with, has no teeth, has no claws, instead camouflages during the day, like so, and maybe gets prey that, you know, maybe insects or maybe smaller creatures that it can then, you know, pop up and grab. So this is me playing with my creature as like a puppet on the environment. And I have to find, well, where would it settle in this environment, right? Where would it catch prey unwittingly? And I'm thinking, like, back here at the edge of the lava pit makes sense. Maybe it's a cold-blooded creature. It needs to stay by warmth. Right? Um, and also, maybe that warmth attracts prey. But if I put my creature in like that and say that I've made a creature escape, I'm not really being truthful. Because this is a creature hidden in the landscape. And this isn't a Bev Doolittle painting. You know, I want it to be in your face that there's a creature there. So I'm going to think that's where it lives, but how can I actually show that it's moving from there? So maybe this is its morning stretch. Or this is when it's settling into place for the day. And then I realize its placement needs to be a little bit more sophisticated than just fitting behind what I already have as composites. So basically, I want it to be in front of these rocks, but behind these rocks, right? So in between these two layers. And once you find that, then you're in good shape because our creature is still a smart object. So we can still grow that creature or rotate that creature without losing any resolution. So before I touch the creature or change the creature, I want to um, make the landscape more helpful to me. So I'm going to reduce all these different layers I have to only four layers. So I'm making the stage simpler. First of all, I can get rid of the gray background. I don't need that at all. Remember, I've already resaved this as something else. So this is assignment three, not assignment one anymore. My far background I already have collected, and that's not going anywhere, right? So that is, I'm now going to merge the group. That turns it into one layer, and that one layer is still the same color, and it's called far background. Great. The background rock, that's not going anywhere. It's the, the layers of mist I have, that's not going anywhere. Anything behind my creature, I can merge together by holding shift and then hitting uh, layer merge layers or just doing command E, which is the shortcut. And that will merge all those layers together. It will also save some memory because empty pixels take up memory. All right. Now, I'm going to have a far background and then a middle ground layer, and then I'm now I'm looking at what's in front of my creature. Here's some stuff that could probably go with the middle ground. Let's see if it matters if my creature is in front of this or not. All right, that's the problem. I have a few options that I like. So let's simplify it in a safe way. The blue are my creature layers. So that's one option, but this is another option the big kind of lava pit monster that only comes up every once in a while. And for that, I need him behind these different middle ground myths. So I'm going to merge all of this together that, that are between my two different possible poses. All of this. So I'm going to hit Command E. It all merges it to be the close near ground, right? 
And what's nice is it's a difference between this layer and where's my foreground? All the stuff in front. So once you know where your creature is, this is my third possible placement, right? Of my creature. Right there. So I'm going to keep that in front. Now I can move all of this that is not atmosphere, all this close foreground stuff, and merge that together. So we're not only saving memory, we're also just making it so that this scene makes more sense. And then all this other stuff, which is basically um, all the texture fills, different overlays. I'm going to move because I might want to use some of the mist and stuff in different ways later. I'm gonna not going to merge them all, but I'm going to move them all into their own folder. So I'm going to group them together by selecting them all using the folder icon, and I'm going to call this group Atmosphere. Merge something I shouldn't have merged. I sh okay. That's where history, I accidentally got my creature in there. Look for the blue. There it is. So I can merge those together. I think it's because I had them all in a folder. And if you merge a folder, even the layers <coughs> that are turned off in the folder will get merged. So I just empty the folder out so I can close it because I have different placements that are more precise, right? Between this clo these close foreground elements. So I wanna keep those separate, but these other aspects I wanna move together. So these two, I'm going to merge together and call this close foreground. And that should be near the top. And then the only thing on top of your, your near foreground or your close foreground is going to be your atmosphere. So I'm going to grab all of this stuff. And instead of merging it together so that I can't play with it later in animation, I'm going to group it and label that group folder atmosphere which is helpful because it allows me to just turn it on and off. Okay. Now, these are my three different placements. And I can label the layers, I, I, the background layers I still have. So this is a rock, I'll call it rainbow rocks. And that is the background element I'm going to have to work with, or the setting element I'm going to have to work with, because I want my creature to be nestled in between these two. Right. And I'll show you how I can do that. And then the other options for where my creature are placed, they all make sense within the near ground and foreground. I like them here behind the crystals. I just think there's a lot going on in that part of the composition. So the composition is actually better served with all this detail and all of these different edges and angles here. It kind of sets off more for the narrative. And then I really like this. This is nice and dramatic. And maybe I'll use that for an animation. But it, it's just too easy. And I don't get to show you all the things about putting shadows in and stuff if he's already in a lava pool with a lot of atmosphere. So this is the easy way out. I'm going to go for something a little bit more difficult. Okay, so 
I don't need my sketch layers anymore, right? So I can delete these. If they're locked, I can unlock them, view them, delete them. And now I'm going to save my work. Make sure it's assignment three, a new name for the desktop. This takes up less memory. Everything will work faster. So this is just prepping your files. I haven't actually changed anything. I've just organized them, right? So now I know where I want my character, but I need to, to make it work, make it integrate with the environment. And before I make changes to my smart layer of my creature, this guy, I need to change the environment. So instead of erasing away his foot so that it's behind that rock, the smarter thing to do from a compositing standpoint is to take that close foreground layer rock or the rainbow rock, this thing, and duplicate part of it. So I use my lasso and I, I take a little grab from that rock, right, just so you can see it. I'm going to grab that more than I need. Right? If I want to be really precise, which is never a bad idea, but it's probably better to, uh, it's always better to have more than you need than less than you need. Right? But I can use option and I can cut out this rock edge. I think it most makes sense. Right. And now I'm going to duplicate just that selection, J, onto a new layer. And now I'll move that new layer above my creature. Right. So I just have this little sliver of rock that's hiding that foot. And what's great about that is I didn't erase from my creature, so I can still move my creature around. Now there's just a more customized setting for him to fit into. Right. The next thing I might want to do is actually play with my creature's placement. So in this newest version of Photoshop, you can actually warp smart objects which is really nice. So while it's still a smart object, I'm going to warp it a little bit, and I'm just going to play with the character's pose very subtly. So it still looks like my character, but I, I need to make him kind of match the perspective of the environment so that his foot is actually touching something that makes sense. So maybe like that. And then his back leg might out kind of like this. And it's still a smart object, which means it's going to use my original resolution pixels. It takes more memory, but it will take my original file and it will make it will optimize it for this resolution. We have not rasterized it yet. And then we can use command Z to see if that warping of our creature helps it fit into the environment or not. Apologize, my Photoshop's taking a while. So Command-Z, that definitely helps. Right? Kind of sets him at an angle and f fits his foot behind that rock. Now, that shows me that I might need to play with the background a little bit more. So if I get rid of my creature, I have more rock I need. So first, I'm going to go to that rainbow rock layer. You can make as, as much of these little internal composite assets as you need. I'm going to make a big shape that definitely overlaps the foot. I like the little grass still on the, the foot of my creature. I'm going to duplicate it from the rainbow rocks in the foreground and push those above my creature. And then I can go in. So remember, I'm not erasing from my creature. Instead, I'm just adding little peekaboo components from my landscape. I'm going to cut out the rock where I think it makes the most sense. So I'm deleting from my copy. 
little mask. 